social media like advocate and fanatic and um and dude I like I you know could notice that it really did kind of like take a toll on me and Mm -hmm. um like I'm an I'm an anxious guy man like I'm very like I think that like I'm constantly worried about um you know my my uh how I'm perceived and Mm -hmm. and you know like how um uh, people engage with me and and you know what people you know may think of me and my music and yeah uh it's so easy for like yourself to get um sucked into like your brain constantly like you know tinkering over over who saw my story or yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. why like how many likes did this get or like how come you know like how come you know this comment you know didn't get as many like favorites or, like it's it, it's so like trivial and it's, it's yeah, yeah yeah such a useless like waste of like my emotions and brain power yeah. and my name is Dooley and you're listening to the real you thoughts ideas and perspectives from the ordinary in all of us your relationship with social media as a musician slash artist like how do you navigate all that yeah I uh I don't know it's like pretty counterintuitive but I definitely have tried to take steps to uh kind of get away from being involved in social media I felt like my attention span was just like constantly like um just kind of like terrible like I I felt like it kind of like hurt my relationships with people or when I would like hang out with people I'd constantly be on my phone or Mm -hmm or like going out to, to lunch with someone, like, you, you know, like you like pick up your phone like three or four times. And um, it just like, I don't know, like this, this, the way that it tracks your screen time is just like insane. And like yeah. the <laughs> amount of hours of, that it like the data gives you about how much you're like on your phone and stuff is just like absolutely absurd. And, mm-hmm. um, and so uh, one of the guys, um, one of the guys in Shea District, um, Andrew, uh was reading uh, this book called digital minimalism by cal newport so like i've been trying to trying to step up my reading game as well so Mm -hmm. i um i read that book and it basically kind of like outlined a lot of the 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 like social network kind of like Mm -hmm. business strategy and um how like there's basically this like attention economy and Mm -hmm. um and these these big social media platforms basically like their whole business model is to keep you engaged Mm -hmm. as long as possible and they prey on like different sorts of like emotions and and Mm -hmm. things that they know will will make you react either negatively or positively and and Mm -hmm. keep you engaged in the app and um and i feel like i feel like with like making music for instance or like or really any sort of like creative or productive activity like your ability to focus is so valuable and it's like a commodity and like to have that like um to have anything get in the way of that is like doing yourself a disservice if you're you know trying to work on a project or or make a new song or or just do kind of anything that's that's going to be beneficial to you and like Mm -hmm. um and so this book kind of like really opened my eyes to uh what uh what was probably like kind of like slowing me down in terms of like how I work and things like that so I've been trying to take steps away from it um and now how like for that to translation translate with music it Mm -hmm. it translates pretty terribly because like (laughs) today like you can't just be you know work on music you have to also like kind of run a brand and engage you know on social media and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and um it's uh is like pretty uh pr- it it kind of works in the other way where like you know like obviously like I, I need to spend time away from social media when I need mm-hmm. to focus but like when it comes to releasing music or promoting shows or or just kind of like mm-hmm. maintaining relationships you need to um you need to constantly be engaged so it's kind of, kind of like a double-edged sword Mm-hmm. um so luckily the two other guys um that help out with who's calling is is michael bull on the mm-hmm. guitar and vocals and charlie our manager um mm-hmm. both of them do a pretty great job of of staying engaged and um i'm like super thankful that um they're cool with me like trying to you know spend time away from it mm-hmm. um and i uh 
do like every like, once in a while for like certain releases and stuff i'll log mm -hmm. back in to help yeah. kind of like help out with the posting and stuff like that but i try to get in and get out as, as fast as because <laughs> um, oh uh, it I looks know, real I feel like, yeah and and not necessarily related to music but like i also just feel like mentally like i feel mm -hmm. so much more like clear-headed and mm -hmm. and more more uh like blissfully unaware of everything that's that's happening yeah. because like um you know your brain is not wired to constantly like know what all of your friends are up to at all times and like mm -hmm. these apps like feed on you know like fomo and mm -hmm. and and feelings of like um exclusion and things like that and mm -hmm um that's just like not like how you're supposed to live you know like yeah. 50 years ago like your parents like didn't have to like sit at home and worry about like what everyone they've ever met is doing like they you know would happily like read a book or go outside or go exercise yeah 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 uh, i'm kind of chasing that so mm -hmm. um so yeah so i don't know it, it it it's been tough it's it i don't think it has necessarily helps with with uh the promo side of music yeah. but i do think that just like for like peace of mind and clarity and ability to work and focus it it's been awesome so yeah yeah, yeah. well that's good what, uh, about, what about you man yeah no i was gonna say I've, i have so many different thoughts on the on the subject um the big thing that i've kind of come to same shit just it's it's knowing that it can be a powerful tool like to, to your point stay engaged or share what you're working on or check out other people's stuff is like i do want to keep in the loop when other friends are you know i follow a ton of different underground music people who i like to hear when they're do doing stuff but at the same time you can just stay stay plugged into soundcloud and kind of find that too but um yeah i like to come to the uh strategy of i now have them deleted from my phone but i'll use my computer to uh check and post which first off it's actually easier to post from your computer which is kind of fun but second on on can you post on instagram from your yeah computer? you can't do I stories I, I don't think you can do stories i haven't but that's also where i'm kind of like that's fine um i love stories are probably good but usually yeah it's like if you know for example doing some of these podcast things or shows or whatever I, it's just i've considered it almost work and not work in a negative way but as in like the focus idea right which is that i if i'm going to be on social media i should be focused on it as in like let me go in do the post maybe check out a few things and then shut it off and then that's where it's like a piece of my day rather than something that i'm just addictively clicking in on and checking up and you get like mind sucked into it um yeah it's crazy it's the the subtle the subtle like i feel like anxiety that it just like kind of implants in you throughout your day is just like not a way to live yeah um, yeah yeah and, there's um do you know moon boy the producer yeah 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 he's like does yeah, yeah, he yeah, yeah 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 so he's um i don't know i was watching some youtube video the other day and he shared like a two minute video of him he just like kind of put his camera up was like hey i just wanted to kind of share this or talk about it cause it's been on my mind like he was working on some song that he was just jamming out onto himself, right? Like, you know, you get into a flow, you like start making a new beat and you're like, this is sick. This is sick. And so he shared it to his like Instagram story basically and started, kept going on the song and then went in and checked on his phone and he didn't have like as many replies of like fire emoji or like hundred or like, mm -hmm. Whoa, this is so dope. And he was talking about how he's like, literally I had this flow going in this, being super into what I was doing. And even though he's super self aware of how social media can react, it's like he saw less responses than he normally gets to something. And he like started to feel shitty about the song and like, he like wanted to stop working on it and like stop creating it and doing the stuff. And so he just made this kind of impulse video of like, just letting you know, like this is like previewing serious. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you gotta be cautious around like, if you're doing it or like how you, even use metrics of people responding or not responding to things and stuff like that. Like it was just such yeah. a cool like perspective from him to how much it can even just interrupt like a creative flow. You were just in and having fun with yourself for 20 minutes. And all of a sudden you're like not having fun anymore from a two second click in and seeing less DMS than you get normal. It's like, yeah. Cool. Like I, I doubt that like Da Vinci would like, like, yeah <laughs> bring his boys in every like 20 minutes to like see where he was at with like whatever he's working on like um, yeah 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 but uh i think that also like um uh i think like part part of 
part of like my frustration with these apps too is like um because because i i think i had instagram around the time when it like first came out or maybe like a year or two after it came out mm-hmm. um with like the chronological feed and mm-hmm. um, it was a bit more tight-knit and you didn't have all these algorithms with like big corporate companies kind of like battling you know in the feed um and now now the business model that made our facebook use or whatever is um it's more like pay to play where it's like you you know if you want to in- increase your reach and and your engagement and things like that like you actually need to promote your posts and mm-hmm. um otherwise if you're not um if you're not like following the algorithms rules for engagement and things like that your posts won't get seen to as many people so like mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like it's kind of insane because like you have all these people with like big Twitter followings and then like they're like people that view their stories as maybe like five percent of like mm-hmm. their actual actual follower count and things like that. So mm-hmm. um, it also just like it 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 doesn't seem like it's like worth the battle honestly sometimes mm-hmm. to to um, go against these big you know co- corporate social media companies that like are basically like using your own content against you and so yeah, like, yeah, yeah. so like when I, when I do go on it, my entire feed is like, is like 10 barstool videos, 10 sports center <laughs> videos. I think one of my friends posts and then like a bunch of like targeted ads. Yeah. So like even the content that I do want to see, like doesn't get to me. And like, yeah. I know that like probably a lot of our content that we post doesn't get to other people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so like, it's so easy to get in your head about like, Oh, like, um, you know, why, why aren't I getting good engagement metrics on social media and stuff like that? And mm-hmm. I, I, like, again, like it, it's just like a lot of like unnecessary anxiety that like, isn't productive to you or what you're really trying to do, which is make music. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Um, so what about and, like, I don't know. I just feel, I just feel like there's so many, there's so many, like, there's so many like bad mental blocks that mm-hmm. like, it kind of like, like puts in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when in like when in reality your job is just like to try to make the best thing that you can and and you know try to pr- promote it the best way that you can yeah. so on, uh, on that I, I talked with my buddy Cameron the other day about this and it was actually in convo with you had sent that I forget the was it lay low or that, some link to it yeah, yeah, oh yeah. you can actually directly for people who want to essentially quote subscribe in a way of like to text communication mm-hmm. where it's, you can just directly yeah. send it to them and I was I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Like, it just cuts right through me trying to discover or see where everything is. Like, no, like, I want to know when you guys put out new shit or have a show, like, just text it to me. But it also eliminates the need to personally reach out to, like, every person and almost that, like, forcing someone into something. Um, so I like that idea. But what else, like, what else is there to get stuff out there? Because as you start to think, like, okay, email, text marketing, and then you're like, social media, even yeah, getting it's, in positions of like whether it be quote press or something like some kind of right, article right. or it's blog like, it's is like the, it's hard the to PR. yeah the PR because even to get the PR things people usually check your pages and see that you're already doing shows or like I, I have a suite of friends who are putting out just super cool music basically mm-hmm. and are even that in the SoundCloud algorithm sometimes they'll get 25 views on the song and I'm like it just gets lost in the ethers of SoundCloud. And I'm like, yeah. this is like criminal that someone would put in so many hours on such a dope piece. And just because they don't have the right promo in place, they can't catch any algorithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Push catch, anywhere. Catch the algorithm to get them to, yeah. Yeah. And so I think that like, I think that that's also like kind of like what one of, I mean, SoundCloud still is, is chronological, I believe, which is yeah. good, but um, it is definitely kind of overrun now by like, um, like repost chains and things like that but and then like also like the algorithms are also like um i still don't really understand how they work but i feel like it's like the amount of engagement that you get within the first like three days on the song of like organic yeah. like yeah. like people you know that follow you and things like that reposting and liking and stuff like that mm-hmm. i think that kind of what is what feeds into the algorithm and then it and then the algorithm would pick it up in like the next like three days three or five days or something like that i don't know i like i but like the algorithms can definitely help you but like it is like it does kind of like not really cater to artists that that <laughs> um don't have that a lot of like that early engagement yet yeah um, yeah yeah which is tough because it's like there's so much good music that just kind of gets like buried um, yeah there's so much constantly being uploaded and stuff like that so which i do like um, at least the culture of soundcloud is 
Oh, it's awesome. You know, it's yeah. built like, under like, oh no, let me discover the song that has 200 views or a hundred. Like it's, there's a nice yeah. aspect of people who are actually looking for it, but even there, it's just tough sometimes. Cause yeah. Um, and like Spotify can be the same thing. And yeah. Um, I don't know, man, it's, it's so tricky and, and like, it's interesting to see the way that these things evolve. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, but I think that the, the things that we are seeing that are trending are like now, um, you know, the companies that are hosting these sites and, and running these social media platforms and stuff like that are now like reaching that life cycle stage of mm-hmm. their business where they need to kind of like increase profits. And the way that you do that is like, okay, well, we're going to take the one thing that people want, which is like, you know, exposure and mm-hmm. the ability to reach a lot of people. And we're going to basically like put a dollar sign on it. Yeah. So like now, if you want now, what originally like we would help you with, like we're going to charge you for, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. which is like sad because like, I think that like that hinders a lot of, of growth and like people, mm-hmm. like people come from all different like financial backgrounds and, and mm-hmm. it's not like super feasible for a lot of people to, to pay for promotion or pay for marketing or pay for their song to hit a certain algorithm or things like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. So it's interesting to see what like a lot of the new, like upcoming, like sound, um, mm-hmm. sound platforms are going to be like, and the new, uh, new ways to communicate with your audiences. I definitely like, personally, I think that, that Instagram, like right now, it obviously seems like it's the biggest and every company needs, needs to have a, instagram presence and things like that but i do think that like the way that it's set up now it's it's um it's like really fighting an uphill battle with trying to like get like constant like kind of good engagement on Mm -hmm. those platforms so um in my time with with promoting my music and promoting like shows and things like that i found that the best really the best way to do it is to um I mean, like one-on-one communicate with anyone that you can really. Um, so like it comes down to like, you know, texting, texting mm-hmm. your friends one-on-one, like posting in, you know, group chats with friends, like seeing mm-hmm. if they'll, you know, be w- willing to share things. Mm-hmm. I think that like everyone feels a lot more inclined to support you when you personally reach out versus mm-hmm. like, oh, like I'm going to post on my story and hopefully the, mm-hmm. you know, 5% of my followers that see the story would be like <laughs> willing to repost it or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I've had people too where they're like, I like go hang with friends and stuff and they're like oh like when you drop in new music stuff I'm like so I literally just put out like a full rap yeah I spent dude. like a two-week like release like campaign yeah I'm yeah. like I did like a whole and again it's like I'm with my distaste for marketing in general and just this social media stuff is I'm notably pretty just poor with my even the strategy of it is I kind of just I'm like oh, I'll post it and hopefully it kind of catches and if not it's not meant to which is not really the mentality you should have but yeah, yeah it's shit like that where honestly you i almost feel this weird it's not like a guilt factor though like if i text everyone individually but like the self-conscious like oh i'm like forcing them or it's yeah you don't i think it's also thing down someone's throats yeah yeah and it's like oh well, if they discover it more organically or listen to it in their their own time it, it, it's also a better experience i feel like like i've noticed that myself too or even if someone sends me a song for me to just click on it instantly if i'm in the mood or like oh shit let me check it then i'm down but sometimes it even takes a couple of days where i'm like oh, let me wait when I'm in my car and that's when I'm jamming the music on the way to work and like, let me put it in my little rotation then or, um, but that's kind of its own thing. I think yeah, it's that's, hard. I feel like that's like the, I think that's like the most like, kind of like, um, I feel like degrading part of like, of mm-hmm. like, it is like kind of like promoting yourself and then like, what, like what, what's the fine line between like, you know like like telling people that you have something new and like hoping that they listen to it versus like mm-hmm. like cramming it in their face and maybe like even like turning them off of of your music and things like that so like yeah, yeah man it's it's tough and um it's obviously like you know posting on instagram twitter uh facebook all that is like mm-hmm. a little bit more um it's a little bit more like I'm going to post this here and whoever sees it, sees it kind of thing, which is nice, yeah. but also like, it feels like it's not as personal when you're, you know, you know, sharing things and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, even, even shift in a kind of question, so separate, separate of the music stuff. What are you most like proud of this year? Uh, what am I most proud of this? Like 2022 or I guess I'm talking more in the past 
year itself. So like over the past year, and the reason why this yeah, comes uh, up, is, yeah, just go for it. I've got some uh, not, I mean, uh, not, it, it's not necessarily a crazy accomplishment or anything, but um, I passed my level one CFA exam, mm. uh, which I started studying for um, last February. And then I, yeah. I took it for the second time in November yeah. um, and ended up passing that. And I think that was like a really big test for me of um, my ability to, you know, study like while juggling work and, mm -hmm. and doing, you know, music stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was kind of, it was kind of a real test of like my own maturity of, mm -hmm. and like discipline of like, okay, like I need to study this many hours. I need to, you know, sleep in, or I need to like go to bed early, like wake up early study. Um, and, you know, that's kind of also around the time when I started to realize that like, I need to, um, I, oh, I need to, uh, to really minimize my like distractions and, and my ability to focus and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, so I spent, you know, basically like seven months last year, kind of like, um, on lockdown mode, trying to yeah. block out a lot of distractions and, and try to learn like a lot of different material and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I, I actually ended up not passing the first time I took it, but I, ended up passing the second time so um it's I'm almost like, like better my... something about that's almost like more like fuck yeah like you know yeah, you kind yeah, of gr yeah. grind it's, through uh, get the grit and then still fucking hustle it out like that's yeah like... it was gnarly it was a it was a big 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 brain suck for sure and yeah um and it definitely like you know was was uh was difficult for me to to juggle all these things and um I am like really you know proud of myself for being able to figure out what kind of like study schedule mm -hmm. works for me you know trying to fit in all this time and um and really kind of you know disconnect from social media try to implement mm -hmm. like different like routines in my day and things like that mm -hmm. um one of, so one of the other books that I, I absolutely loved um reading last year was called Atomic Habits if you've mm -hmm. read that one yet oh no um it's a really, really inspiring book. This, uh, the author, I guess, uh, um, uh, his background's kind of like uh, fuzzy to me now, but he was a baseball star, um, ended up getting like kind of like a horrific like brain injury and had to, you know, relearn how to think like walk and talk again and mm -hmm. things like that. And he ended up recovering and playing pro baseball after that yeah. um and he studies neuroscience and it's basically like about um so it's like the science of of building everyday habits to mm -hmm. achieve you know like different things and like for me it's like um you know practicing music and mm -hmm. um right now i'm actually taking vocal lessons so it's like oh yeah um so it's like how do I like find time in my day to like constantly make sure that I'm practicing and building these habits of practicing to like you know get better at whatever I want to do yeah 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 um, that's awesome so, uh, so if you if you have if you have some time read Atomic Habits I thought it was it was super super helpful with just kind of like describing um you know what makes these things easy like yeah. and what 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 sort of like tips and tricks you can do to to set cues in your day to be like, Oh, I need to go practice this or, and mm -hmm. make it like as easy as possible to. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that, I think that really, really was helpful with, with me um, in the past year. And I've been trying to constantly like implement those things into my like daily lifestyle. And um, yeah, I feel a little bit more, I, I feel like a robot sometimes because I like, I'm trying to like, kind of like be a little bit more like diligent and, mm -hmm. um, in my daily kind of like routines and schedules and stuff, but I do, you know, feel like a really great version of myself and mm. um, I feel like I'm getting a lot done. So. Yeah. Well, that's uh, yeah. like, I feel like the kind of golden thing is knowing that you're at least working towards like what feels like the best or right version of yourself in this time. Um, where sometimes it's like, that's actually where I think a lot of myself kind of, I don't know if it's anxiety or, like self deprecation of like, ah, I'm not good enough. It's like, it's knowing your own, like it's knowing the levels at which I can do things and, yeah. then, and then falling out of them. And also, yeah, the habit is, um, I don't know what quote it is or something, but if the, and this is something I think about and talk about all the time, actually with uh, friends is like, our life is literally just a collection of small habits, like the entirety of whether it be our 
health and eating or this subtle habit of going to the gym each day. And then you come into music like over, I mean, I don't know how many years you've been doing it, but I'm expecting, <laughs> but I don't know, five, six plus, but it's, you don't just get good at something, but if you build in a small habit of fuck it, 20 minutes a day to like learn one skill on Ableton or find one melody or something, when you start to mass that out over six years, all of a sudden you're creating dope fucking whatever you want to be. Yeah, yeah. And it's like the same thing with even reading. Like I struggle with reading. I've always hated reading. I'm like so painfully slow. Um, but do you know the book Dune or the movie? Is see? that the movie? Yeah. I actually haven't, I haven't seen it yet, but I heard it was oh. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what, first off, hundred percent watch it. Also watch it. Like Kel- Kelsey, if you're, if you're watching this, I want to go see Dune. Yeah, okay. Good, good. I'm, I'm trying to convince my girlfriend to see it with me, dude. No, one thousand. <laughs> my, it's my all-time favorite movie. First off, the sound, oh, sick. Okay. The sound score is like epic. Second, the story, even the movie, like they did. I think intentionally the best possible thing they could have done, and it still misses some of the like underlying tones of the book. But um, basically, I actually so I read the book this year. Like I finished, thankfully, enough of the book where the movie only did the first half and then ended up okay. finishing the book. But um, yeah, even that in itself of making the practice to take time to read was like, a, that was a major life step for me this year. Like I, mm-hmm. it's been, good, even good. in college or high school, it's like when we had the reading, it's, I was, I was pretty good at finding the spark notes or the friend who had read it. Yeah, or like, yeah, I'd literally yeah, open yeah. a chapter, go to the page, circle a quote. And then in class, I'd be like, what'd you think? I'd raise my hand. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Get some shit about a quote but not have actually read any of the thing <laughs> and so yeah, like, i feel i feel like in school i think that's like also kind of like one of the gripes that i have with with schools like <laughs> it, you're like almost conditioned in a way where like you're not necessarily rewarded for knowledge but just like your ability to to perform in certain sort of like yeah. uh, get your homework done and and perform in these exams and um while there is like a good majority that like um, genuinely do you know study hard and, and observe the material really well there's also it also creates like this environment where it's like if you're not getting the, as good of grades as the person next to you you're not going to be successful so like yeah, it yeah. incentivizes like kids like you know finding workarounds and and you oh, know, um, <laughs> things like that which is tough but that's uh, funny um but I would say that like I also was not a big reader at all yeah and I I still don't I wouldn't say that I'm like I'm, I'm good at reading or like mm-hmm. I like read a lot mm-hmm. um but I do in the past like since you know graduating school basically I have really enjoyed reading like the different sort of like lifestyle books and mm-hmm. books on like personal finance and and yeah, yeah, yeah. uh and like the you know atomic habits and um mm-hmm. this digital minimalism book and stuff like that things that things that I feel like uh are a little bit more like introspective yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think have been like really interesting to me so I've been having a good time reading those so I'll send you a list dude of yeah the ones that I really loved I think that you'd really like them as well do it because I'm gonna check out the audio version and see if there's <laughs> yeah, dude, or, or I, 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 I was never an audiobook scab but like I know a lot of people like also, yeah you know, no no I'm digesting just... the same like material so yeah and it's also um, the but... oh, it's Very the digesting like the small habit of again on your way to work like same thing of I've started to do that more with the podcast realm and the podcasts I listen to are pretty underlying, like the philosophical or like they have guests who are like bringing in thoughts that are like driving, whether it be some sort of person talking about the psychology of the social media thing or the habit thing or, or whatever it could be. But, um, but yeah, it's like even the habit of normalizing that on the car ride, for example, is over the fucking year of however much you're, on the your way to work by yourself is like you start to it starts to like infect your brain to think certain ways and so it just it's what are you actually putting in your brain to help direct the way that it starts to think um yeah for sure um the one of the, so like one of the habits that i've been also building um out this past year is i have like i i have i have like sort of like a post-it note board um mm-hmm. of like different tasks that i need to kind of like take care of every day Mm-hmm. um and so one of the ones that i've been implementing in the past year has also been um uh do some sort of like mixing a song or you know or just working in ableton for 20 minutes every day mm-hmm. and then i set um i set the stopwatch on my clock mm-hmm. or sorry on my phone 
um, for 20 minutes and mm -hmm. I just put it down next to my computer. And so I know that every time I like look down and see the timer running, I know that like, can't get distracted, just work on this for 20 minutes. It'll be over in a sec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so that way, if you, if you put 20 minutes in, you can like, you can, everyone can easily find 20 minutes of their day to like yeah. do something. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's like a very like reasonable amount of time. Yeah. And so if you, if you do the math, um, and you do at least 20 minutes every day, Monday through, you know, Sunday or Monday through Friday or whatever, like mm -hmm. you're getting almost like two hours, two and a half hours of, mm -hmm. of what you want to get done. And like, I mean, some people don't even work two hours, two and a, or like find time to do two and a half hours, like during the week, you know, Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that, you know, that also kind of like builds on itself. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've just been trying to like, find that like I know that I'm not going to have time or like the drive to work every single day mm -hmm. I know that you know some days are going to be longer than others and yeah, yeah, yeah. and some days I'm just not going to be feeling it or feeling inspired but I know that like you can always find 20 minutes of your day mm -hmm. to do something and like that stuff adds up absolutely yeah 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 even uh, with um last little thing here on the uh I'll just say meditation or I don't know if you have dabbled yeah in, I, use, right? I actually use headspace i use headspace every day I love oh really headspace. Yeah, yeah okay cool um so i've been doing like i had a a phase for the past few months where i was more in the straight meditation realm um and i have this kind of life coach therapist person who we've been working together for years now and, uh that's awesome super helped to like bring me into normalizing all these things but i've actually come to find my uh yoga it's just down the road five minutes or something but i've been doing that i'd say most days and first off I have physical like leg and hip issues and stuff. So it helps mm -hmm. there, but it's, it's like, even I leave my phone here when I go. So it's kind of getting in the car, not having music on just five minutes, park, go by myself, walk in, do it. Even right after I'm, you know, yoga itself is a very like mind, body, mental space. Mm -hmm. And then coming out of it, it's just walking back to the phone without your car, like feeling better. Like there's something that's just so refreshing about, take in that's a little longer like it's an hour plus the 10 minute mm -hmm. 10 minute so but at the same time it's the practice of like become like respecting myself and becoming friends yeah. with myself mm -hmm. in those little moments um mm -hmm. so even if it's not some life thing that's moving me quote forward it's like it's keeping me sane in a weird way like it's keeping dude, it, yeah dude up. i think i think that like time for yourself is is so um so important just for your, like your mental clarity and your ability to think and, and, you know, make decisions and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, uh, going back to the, you know, your phone is always fighting for your attention. Like mm -hmm. I have like bleacher report or, um, or like other, other yeah. apps that aren't necessarily even like even social media, but like just like news apps or like sports mm -hmm. apps and things like that. I'll get, I'll get a notification from one of those like like six or seven times during the day and it'll be like some headline I don't care about or like something like that but it does like it does kind of like screw up my flow of whatever I'm doing and to like check it and just be like oh it's nothing yeah, yeah, and yeah. uh and so like I think that like putting your phone away and going to and going to yoga and like spending that full hour away from it where it's not like going to be pinging you or just like making noise or like you yeah. know like calling for your attention I think is like really really good you know what's interesting? Uh, for years, awesome. for years now, I've never I turned off any um vibration for on my and noise, but like any vibration from my phone too. So even like to your point, if you're at dinner or something and your phone's in the pocket, it's like I have no I have I don't it's an intentional thing of not getting the little itch of mm -hmm. wanting to check it. Like you're at the dinner table and you're even if you're not yeah yeah, yeah. It, like, it's like it's like your yeah. brain like sucks into it or like okay we'll, fi we'll finish this like, i'll like your get out of like this combo so i can check it yeah. like yeah so this little tip if you're looking for a uh yeah, yeah, yeah. random uh, strategy to taking the buzz I off do, you uh, miss a lot of calls i miss calls all the time but <laughs> I, miss, I miss calls all the time yeah um i use uh the do not disturb thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so like, uh, and then if you, you can set your favorites on your phone. So like mm -hmm. those will still come through. Yeah. So yeah, I have yeah. Like, I have like my parents, my girlfriend, and I think like my boss, yeah. uh, if they need to get a hold of me. And other than that, like, like yeah. Michael and Charlie, no know. way. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad that you kind of feel the same way about a lot of these things. I, I feel like it's been like such a, such a, um, huge change and i think like my lifestyle over the past year because like i definitely was a big mm -hmm. um social media like advocate and fanatic and yeah. um and dude i like i 
you know, could notice that it really did kind of like take a toll on me. And, mm -hmm. um, like I'm an, I'm an anxious guy, man. Like I'm very, yeah. like, I think that like, I'm constantly worried about, um, you know, my, my, uh, how I'm perceived and, mm -hmm. and, you know, like how, um, uh, people engage with me and, and, you know, what people, you know, may think of me and my music. And, yeah. uh, it's so easy for like yourself to get, um, sucked into like your brain constantly, like, you know, tinkering over, over who saw my story or yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. why, like how many likes did this get? Or like, how come, you know, like, how come, you know, this comment, you know, didn't get as many like favorites or like, it's, it, it's so like trivial and it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. such a useless, like waste of like my emotions and brain power. Yeah. And, um, and so I really hope that there is kind of a shift away from these things over the next few years. And, mm -hmm. um, and like when I first kind of like started to hear how these things were bad for you, I was like, Oh, you know, I could see that, but like, definitely not me. Like, yeah yeah like, yeah totally like 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 i'm cool about it or like like yeah. i'm disciplined about it but like in reality i wasn't and like yeah. um and i'm i'm happy that i've kind of been trying to like step away from the shift of these things because i i feel so much more like happy just being blissfully aware yeah, or yeah. blissfully unaware yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah and like i know that in the long run like it'll you know help me with my personal relationships and my ability to communicate like effectively and yeah, yeah, not, yeah. you know, constantly be like looking down at my phone every like, yeah. 10 it's seconds. Just presence, so. It's just being present in whatever you're doing, whether that's a conversation or music or reading your book. It's like, yeah, it's, it's almost like the, I, I, we won't get it. We won't get it. We can kind of call it here on this, but the, my, I literally think the meaning of life is to be present. And so it's kind of in that pursuit of, presence which is finding flow in the music like laughing at jokes with your friends like eating a meal that you're just enthralled with like whatever it is our life is kind of just a collection of moments at which we're either in tune with or we're not and so mm -hmm. it's like leaning towards being in tune with whatever it is even if there are moments you don't enjoy or that are painful or so um but yeah that's where too it's kind of just leaning like am i trying to push my life in the direction of that and recognizing I still am struggling and battling with things now, but like if I'm heading in that direction, it feels like I'm successful, even regardless of any other metrics out there. And so it's like, um, I don't know, I found comfort in that feeling of, I know I'm working towards that in tuneness in different ways and it's a struggle and always is, but uh, yeah, I think. It's yeah. My, uh, my, my favorite quote ever. Uh, my dad, my dad always would say this to, to me and my sister, my brother. Um, I am sure it's from somewhere else. And like, like <laughs> someone correct me. Uh, but uh, my favorite quote that I always like keep in mind is champions work when no one else is watching. Mm -hmm. And so like, I feel like um, while like it is important to constantly like promote your music and try to like grow a fan base and things like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, the real work that needs to be done, like, isn't on the social side of things it's yeah. like how good the music is and like yeah. i think it speaks a lot more to to whatever you want to do is like don't like let don't let like all the bright lights and things like that kind of like distract you from like the real work that you need to do and like when you kind of like are able to like shut those things out then like your ability to work will create the best possible like product yeah and you're working for you at that like, point too which is that's when it yeah 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 so like i try to keep that in mind and, and know that like while i may be like quiet on social media now and and uh you know like probably like more reserved i think like socially like mm -hmm. um i know that in the long run like that'll pay off and whatever mm -hmm. i am able to to produce and and things like that will eventually kind of like reward me greater than anything else so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. So yeah, man. I, Good um, shit. Totally thank with you it. so much for uh, calling with me. I, do, I miss you, buddy. I want to yeah. go get a beer with you soon. I'm actually yeah. out here in California right now. Oh, okay. Um, staying with my parents for the next few weeks because of work. But uh, yeah. I'd, love to, I'd love to sit down and catch up with you more, man. You're such a, like, a chill guy. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I feel, like we, I feel like we do really have a lot of similar, uh, similar views on sort of like introspectiveness and yeah, yeah yeah and how like our psychology and things like that so um, yeah yeah we well, when you're, when you're back in denver we got we'll do a beer and then we'll make chef up a beat we'll, we'll see what we can do oh dude absolutely man i want to see uh i want to see your, your uh new studio is that where you are right now 
Yeah, so I'm actually just in my my room. I've got some shit on the floor, so I'm really. I mean, I got this. Is like, I got the little setup here. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, got yeah, and so we kind of too. I've been um doing some stuff like at the office spot we've got. I've got a little kind of the the soundboards don't need to do that. Wait, okay, wait. So so give me give me the give me the snapshot right now of what what's going on with you and music. Um, where yeah, so I, I did that show the other day, which was kind of like um yeah, Lermelon, like, right? yeah 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 and so that's man um, it, it looks sweet yeah yeah so that was like a super fun i the person who i was opening up for his name is medusa like super talented like huge inspiration of mine um in kind of like the bass music realm but yeah that kind of felt like man, a moment that's awesome yeah it felt like a moment of um i played full original set so it felt like a moment of years of work and put into like a moment to share with like an actually an appropriate crowd of people who are yeah. already into the music in a s- yeah, sound exactly. system that was confined and large and, like, to it and the lighting and everything. Yeah, yeah 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 and so um yeah it felt like a really it, it's good because it almost inspires me to be like okay i know i can get there again but it's also kind of like lock in the studio time is basically where i'm at is i feel a little bit like i don't really have like help from the management side and the promo side i feel like i struggle with but then I'm also like, I feel like I haven't at the same time, I am sitting on like 10, 15 songs that I feel like I actually want to just, I just kind of want to sit there and just put out songs on SoundCloud like every other week and just sort of, mm-hmm. that's sort of my vibe with it. I'm not going to put like, I don't really make hit music <laughs> it's, per se. Some songs can catch momentum, but um, that's sort of hey, my. You never know, man. Yeah, no, no, but it, it, no, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like, even my vibe with it is lesser of okay, I have to have this one perfect song as much as I'm like, I'm still trying to discover my own sound. And I've started to find a lot of overlaps, but it's a, it's, a, it's in its own niche, I feel like, which is good too at this point. Good. So saturated that you kind of have to do something a little crazy. Um, but that's good because I like, I like a little crazy. <laughs> um, good, so good. Um, that's right. I feel, were, yeah. That's... Were you just, were you just absolutely buzzing after the show? And like, oh, yeah, yeah. There and everything? Yeah, yeah, man. That's, that's one of those things where you like, go terribly you. or and then it's just like, it worked like it worked. I didn't my computer didn't fuck up. We like yeah. it was a fun time. Did you, did you hop on the microphone too? Oh, we did some stuff. I did my I have a rap yeah. song. I have that you remember that nasty song, the food one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I I have a a remix version that I do. Um where like it's the my rapping into it and then I flip it into this like goofy it's not even like house, it's like whatever. It's just kind of like a, like a dancey, bass. Like, like it's like yeah. hip hop and then it goes into like a weird bass flip um yeah it's like i did the whole rap thing up there and it's kind of, one of those <laughs> it's just a, it's just always a what the fuck's going on type of moment but i love yeah. that kind of feeling so anyway just a couple of little things but i don't like to do the like I, in fact i really dislike the one two three like zero yeah, that yeah, shit yeah. it's more like you know some random let the music shit, you felt there and like yo know, this is uh like brand new and favorite drop but like i just saw yeah, like yeah, little yeah, random yeah, yeah. None of the crowd hyping with the, with the mic, but uh, <laughs> yeah, right on. Awesome. Yeah, man. That's great to hear. Are you, so are you, uh, are you working on music usually like at home or in, in uh, you, you said you're working at a studio too? Um, sometimes. So yeah, that youth on record place, which you've actually, oh, well, that place is sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So I started doing um, kind of like part-time substitute basically where they run their open labs and um, I'll go in there and basically work with, other youth either help them make beats or do their recording stuff or if they're like writing songs just kind of be someone to bounce ideas yeah. off of um or just talk about life shit um so yeah. i kind of been doing hey, that well, a little if bit if you if you ever have time man i'd love to come in and just like sit in on one of those sessions with you i think that's awesome yeah oh yeah, yeah no it's yeah. So, well so those are kind of like basically open-ended so i basically go in for three or four hours like when they their time length and then as people come in it's just to kind of help them out but also you can 100% come in and same shit if someone's looking for they don't know how to get the midi right on Ableton it's like oh here's some tips and you can actually mm-hmm. get more interesting hi hats if you adjust the volumes here and it's like oh whoa yeah. like, little shit like that mm-hmm. um but yeah so i've been doing that but otherwise i just yeah i finally i actually got a i went to the full camera thing under here but i got a sub finally which is like oh dude I, still, I actually still don't even have one which one I, did you get um it's the KRK fuck i don't know it's like the mid it's like the eight one. or five or something yeah like i forget that, which right? one it yeah. actually is it was the mid awesome. one. you like it? it was a big like save up the money and i was kind of like 
I can't be making like bass music without a sub. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of just came. I mean, you can, but I hit that point of I feel like I've worked for years of, and I did a couple of sessions at uh, like my buddy's place who he had a sub, and I could just hear it was like knowing that I want that last three percent of like dopeness in my mix and and like getting the sounds just right. And yeah, I like kind of could hear it at his place a little differently than mine. I was I just kind of got that feeling of. No, this is, it's, I'm going to be doing this for life. Like I might as well get a set. Yeah. <laughs> I think investing in gear that like, you know, that you're absolutely going to use and stuff is yeah. like always worth it. Yeah. Like I don't need um, a big, big synth lineup right now or anything. That's like, if I have some crazy amount of money like, right now, I need yeah. the sub though is like a fun, uh, it's just a fun thing for me to like. Are you, are you living in an apartment or a basement right now? Um, house. So or, or, at a house. Yeah. 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 I are, you still, other... are you still at that? Are you still at that house that I was at last time with the garage? No, no. this is um kind of Northern Highland, South Sunnyside, Denver. Oh, dang, so, I didn't realize that. Okay, yeah, I'm too with, far from me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm with uh, uh Pete and Davino and then this other guy, Charlie, who you would know into Boulder. And then, right uh, on. I, I ran into Pete um at Arl Grime at the church not too long ago. But, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, dude, I'll have to do, uh, I'll have to come over and check it out. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But let me know when you're back say, in town and we'll, we'll, fucking beer in a little studio yeah set. absolutely like absolutely man i like i feel like i've been you know kind of like closed off from everyone and everything for a while where it's just been like i've been focusing on studying or like prepping for like shows and stuff like that and yeah, yeah, yeah. i've like i've always been pretty bad at um collaborating with people i'm like one like self-conscious and two just like um unavailable a lot yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and uh and now i've kind of just been like trying to let go of a lot of that sort of like self-consciousness and yeah and um and just like kind of have more fun with it like working yeah. you know with different types of people and yeah. different types of music and things like that um so i feel like i feel like that's what it's supposed to be all about yeah. you know? no the fun part about working with me is i don't give a shit what we make <laughs> is i've like yeah. a lot of people have like a very let's make some reggae like, their, like or something. brand and like certain yeah. shit part of my feeling is yeah it's always going to be something kind of a little bit on the edge of something but uh at the same time i'm i love all the different genres that's kind of where a little bit of my long game like fuck it mentality is it's just no i just want to create dope shit and if it's dope it's dope if it even if it's not if i had fun making it and feel like sharing it cool if we don't share it whatever it was fun to kick it and mess around with sound. yeah like, I, don't I, feel like, I feel like it's i feel like it's also like honestly like so good for you to like do like different styles of things and and mm -hmm. try different like sort of like methods and genres and stuff like that because i feel like you learn kind of like a lot of more things that you wouldn't really touch like yeah. bit if you were just like sticking to one thing so yeah so yeah, yeah. man we'll, we'll absolutely have to man but, hell yeah hell yeah uh thank you thank you so much for uh for letting me hop on this call here with you man i miss you i love you you're, what you're doing is so inspiring and hey. um i i wish you you know all this good fortune and i know that you're gonna get yeah. it because of how, how hard you work and whatnot so all right, so yeah man i'll hit you up next time i'm in town all right peace that sounds sounds great and uh same with you man always inspire me with the music and just putting shit out there so uh, yeah. hey i appreciate that man take care bro